David G. Watamol is CEO and co-founder of Cardax Pharma, as well as co-inventor of the Cardax technology. Prior, as CEO of Hawaii Biotech, he led efforts that resulted in more than 50 million in funding and purchase of the company's Den Denju fever vaccine by Merck. Previously, he was a biotech analyst, money manager, and investment banker. Mr. Wadamal? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm delighted to be here today. Great to see all of you. It's almost Hawaii weather where I'm from uh, in, in New York today, so it, it feels pretty good here. So, so, so who's Cardax? Uh, we are, we are developing exceptionally safe and highly effective oral anti-inflammatory nutraceuticals and pharmaceuticals that address uh, the multi-billion dollar chronic diseases driven by inflammation. And we are leveraging extensive intellectual property around something called astaxanthin. Now you may have heard of that, there's been a lot of press about that, there's been a wealth of scientific uh, data, uh, and even FDA now approved safety. We've also put together a exclusive manufacturing, distribution, and marketing partnership with the world's largest uh, chemical company, uh, BASF, around the commercialization of our first nutraceutical product. Uh, we put together a great team, I think, uh, to get this done. She mentioned uh, some, some of my background there. But in addition, uh, Gil Richton, our chief scientific officer, is the former uh, head of small molecule drug discovery at Amgen. Uh, Nick, Nick Mitsakos, uh, our executive chairman, major investor in the company, has led uh, about 40 companies from private uh, status through to uh, exits. Uh, and then Frank Herringer is the uh, current chairman, former CEO of Transamerica, but importantly for us, on the board of Amgen. Uh, our key science experts, uh, Bob Eckel, the former president of the American Heart Association. Deepak Bod is one of the world, uh, world's leading principal investigators. These are the guys who actually design and lead the big clinical trials uh, for big pharma companies. And Preston Mason, also uh, at Harvard. Uh, uh, Preston, uh, I'm sorry, Deepak is at Harvard as well. Preston Mason at Harvard uh, led the efforts to elucidate the unusual mechanism of action that led to our understanding of how a compound could actually have a powerful anti-inflammatory effect, but yet without the side effects of the other uh, anti-inflammatory compounds that are out there today. Our investment highlights, we think we're uniquely positioned to capitalize on the significant unmet demand of a large and rapidly growing market. We have proprietary te technology that creates substantial and defensible competitive advantages and barriers to entry. I've mentioned our world-class manufacturing and distribution partnership. Uh, we have a compelling business model featuring a rapid path uh, to profitability, multiple channels for growth with just modest capital requirements. And uh, as you've just seen, we have a solid management team with a strong operational and technical expertise. But why is inflammation so important here? We now know scientifically well, I think established and, and accepted, that most of the chronic diseases that we're familiar with actually have a common cause, and that is inflammation. Not only are we talking about osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease and psoriasis, but things you might not think about so readily, like dyslipidemia, elevated triglycerides, for example, diabetes and metabolic sy syndrome, liver disease, thrombosis, Alzheimer's, and really many others. There are many anti-inflammatories out there today, but none of them are safe enough to take every day for these chronic diseases. So what's needed, we think, is something called astaxanthin, the compound we're developing. It's powerful, yet safe enough to take every day the rest of your life. What's astaxanthin? Well, we probably know it best as a compound that makes uh, salmon pink and lobster red, but it's synthesized by microalgae. It protects microalgae from in, uh, severe environmental stress. Krill and other small crustaceans in turn eat, uh, eat uh, this microalgae. It goes up the food chain to salmon and whales. And as I mentioned, it makes salmon red, but it also makes them stronger, makes them more resistant to infections, increases their reproduction. Just to show you how ubiquitous it is in the, uh, in the environment, the marine environment, here's a picture of a lobster with astaxanthin and without. Uh, lobsters use it to protect themselves. But here's really something really interesting that really kind of catalyzed our aha moment, if you will. We, we, 
found out that without astaxanthin, salmon are not strong enough to swim upstream. So clearly something much more biologically profound was going on than making the flesh pink for human prettiness. And so these observations really catalyzed a lot of research by us and as it turns out now many others. Now there are more than 900 peer-reviewed published papers on astaxanthin, including 27 human proof of concept uh, clinical trials, animal studies show infla uh, inflammation reduction equivalent to the gold standard anti-inflammatory corticosteroids like prednisone. And in humans, astaxanthin has been shown to reduce elevated triglycerides in a double-blind randomized placebo control trial, uh, e as it turns out, equivalent to Loveza, one of the, the key um, uh, dr drugs that lower triglycerides. But the real separation here uh, with astaxanthin is that astaxanthin does not have the side effects of other anti-inflammatory treatments. It actually reduces infections. How many anti-inflammatories can, can say that? You actually see decreased liver inflammation, decreased liver enzymes. Heart and vascular issues, such as those that derail Vioxx. With astaxanthin, you see reduced atherogenesis, reduced blood clots, and protects heart following myocardial infarction. I've told you about improve, uh, improved reproduction, but perhaps most importantly, uh, the FDA now recognizes uh, astaxanthin as grass. That's generally recognized as safe. That's the ultimate safety designation uh, that the FDA can confer. And that's based on more than 10 years of human uh, safety with, with uh, astaxanthin nutraceuticals that are out there today. So these scientific results have led to a market explosion with sales up 100% over the last year globally, uh, driven by a strong recommendation by TV medical expert Dr. Oz, who called it the number one supplement you've never heard of that you should be taking. And demand is now well in excess of supply. But so why don't current manufacturers of astaxanthin just increase production to, to, to meet this demand? Well, current production is essentially agricultural. It's grown, the largest uh, producer is actually in Hawaii in, in globally. But this is a, an inef inefficient and costly process. I was able actually 10 years ago to bring out the first astaxanthin nutraceutical to the market. So I'm very familiar with this process. Uh, the astaxanthin yield is variable. It's uh, subject to risk, uh, weather, and disease. Uh, you lose a lot of batches, which is very expensive. It requires ideal tropical condition, acres and acres of land. And it's just simply not a process that can scale to the mass market that's needed. And in fact, after all of this, the, the yield is only 5 to 10 percent astaxanthin, which makes optimal practical dosing, especially when you might need to take 5 or 10 capsules, really problematic, for, especially for the elderly. That's a, that's a difficult process for them. And to, to our knowledge, there's been no mass market nutraceuticals like vitamin E, C, or D, et cetera, or obviously pharmaceuticals that use agricultural methods as their primary production method, all use synthetic chemistry in, in some way or another. So we knew when we saw this that there was a, we needed to come up with a cost-effective, nature-identical astaxanthin synthetic that can be mass produced and distributed to meet the large, rapidly growing demand. But we also knew that there were probably only two companies in the world that could actually do this. One was DSM, that's a, a Dutch company, about an $8 billion market cap. The other is BASF, uh, the world's largest chemical company at an $80 billion market cap. And we were fortunate to attract BASF to our project. We now have an exclusive production contract with them where we can scale to virtually unlimited scale, have synthetic production, high purity, attractive pricing. And this is the same manufacturing solution that has now ended up dominating the markets for vitamins E, C, D, and A, where BSF plays a major role. But we've gone beyond that manufacturing contract now. We now have an exclusive uh, licensing contract with BSF uh, as well. So BSF will, not, will license, manufacture, commercialize, and distribute our nature identical astaxanthin product. They think they can get this on the market in six to 12 months. They're gonna secure the grass des designation in the US that's necessary to start those sales. And we're gonna receive tiered royalties on all BASF sales. Our role is to support BASF efforts through medical and scientific clinical trial, design oversight, marketing at medical conferences 
focusing first on, on arthritis. Distribution is really crucial, getting it on the shelf in Walmart or Costco or GNC, but it's not sufficient to drive a market in the nutraceutical area. You have to reach the customer. And we think going out to the conferences where you can actually reach the key opinion leaders who treat osteoarthritis, for example, is the way to do this. And in fact, it's the way glucosamine and chondritin have gotten to a $2 billion market already using this strategy. So what does the market look like for, for arthritis? Globally, there's 150 million people, at least, in the middle class who can pay something like a uh, dollar a day, maybe two dollars a day. They're buying cell phones, they're buying cars. We think astaxanthin is going to be one of the most effective treatments, if not the most effective treatment for osteoarthritis. But if you multiply that, that 150 million times a dollar times 365, you're talking about a potential market of $55 billion, a very, very large market. That's one way. Another way, look at the top 10 drugs that are, that are out there. Numbers six, seven, and eight on the list here, or numbers, uh, yeah, six, seven, and eight in the top 10 drugs by sales in 2012 are all anti-inflammatory drugs for rheumatoid and other forms of arthritis, selling about 12 billion a year. Those are drugs, but what about dietary supplements? Can they achieve you know, those types of, uh, of revenues? Well, vitamin E, uh, major uh, uh, nutraceuticals, it sells about $3 billion a year. But importantly for us, more on point for, on point for us, chondritin and glucosamine, specifically targeted at osteoarthritis, sell about $2 billion a year. So these numbers can be very large even in, in the nutraceutical space. So what does that mean to uh, potential BASF revenues and therefore to Cardax revenues and to uh, Cardax's bottom line? If uh, BASF can achieve even a 1% penetration of this 150 million global market, they'll have revenues at, at, the, at their wholesale uh, selling price there of a, a little over $300 million a year. That would result in about $16 million in revenue uh, from our royalties maybe about $7.5 million uh, to the bottom line there. Uh, but if they can get up to 3% uh, penetration, nearly a billion in sales, uh, about 60 million royalties to us, and 30 million or more in, in revenues uh, for us. But we're not stopping with nutraceutical development. We are planning to develop astaxanthin as a pharmaceutical as well. Why? Actually, we have a comparatively low cost of, the, of development. We estimate only 30 to 50 million dollars, which obviously sounds like a lot of money, but compared to the 200 million or more typically for a drug, that's a lot less. And how do we do this? We're going to pick efficient and low risk opportunities. Because there are so many potential indications, we can pick the lowest hanging fruit for, for astaxanthin. And we're going to look at osteoarthritis, as I've told you about, but also triglyceride reduction, diabetes, and cognitive decline also offer shorter trials, less, uh, in less time, less cost. Uh, where we can meet these kinds of development uh, criteria. Uh, we've put in uh, significant IP work already. We have uh, 13 issued U.S. and five global patents, eight pending. But if we can get a pharmaceutical status uh, for, for this, which I believe we can, I don't think we're going to have one or two or three percent uh, penetration. It's going to be much higher. Also, the doses will be higher, and so we can charge a higher price as well. So those numbers can even gr grow exponentially from what I, I've just talked about. Cardex is not just uh, astaxanthin for, for arthritis. Uh, as I mentioned, we have other indications, including uh, triglycerides, diabetes, and cognitive decline. But we also have other products uh, behind, coming behind this, all powerful anti-inflammatories with, uh, with unique safety, uh, including for diseases uh, like liver disease, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's. We have two other products that address that actually uh, one goes into your eye, into the macula of your eye, and improves your uh, vision for macula. And uh, the other is for, for prostate uh, d disease here. We have a deal that uh, we can talk to you about. Uh, it's an excellent opportunity. It gives you a 3x at, the, at, at our reverse merger IPO, which we're planning in, in the next, uh, uh, in, in the next uh, f uh, 45 to 60 days. Uh, and we can talk about that a little bit more if you have an interest. And just to finish up here um, with our investment highlights again, we are uniquely positioned to capitalize on the significant unmet demand uh, for astaxanthin in ra large and rapidly growing markets, including uh, arthritis for nutraceutical and pharmaceutical purposes. We have proprietary technology. World-class manufacturing distribution partnership with BSF is in place. C compelling business model 
we don't need a lot of cash and we're only looking for about five million dollars actually and we have the solid management team that can execute on this so thank you very much and i know we have a minute or two but if there are any questions or we can meet later thank you